Hey guys, Marvin and Kid here back again. How's everybody doing on their end? So what are we doing today? Well, as always, guys, um, we're to do some reviews. All right. Um, so today on this episode, guys, I'm going to review the books that I got for the week of October 18th. As you guys know, as I told you guys before, I pick up my books every other week. I don't pick them up weekly anymore um so you're getting as always two back-to-back -back, uh episodes today uh but today we're going to talk about the books that came out that i got for the 18th here's my stash uh we got some marvel we got some indie and we got some dc for you guys as always so we're going to kick this off with um marvel and uh we're looking at Cable number 150. Um, and of course, it's the cover, you know, it's the cable cover, but it also has the New Mutants cover, um, 87 cover where Cable was on it. It was, it was pretty cool. Um, so, Mr. Mr. Bre Reeson uh, continues the story. This is Cable has enlisted the help of Longshot. Good to see Longshot again. Um, and he's in investigating the death of uh, uh, Kadri, the one of the Eternals. And he asks his Longshot to come with him and work Longshot, work his magic. Work his magic and see what he could see through her eye before she died. Which they believe is impossible because of the fact that she's immortal. She can't die. And she's very powerful, but somebody killed her. Unfortunately, Longshot can't see who she sees who killed her. But they realize that she could be the last. There's one other, Celine. So Cable enlists the help of a few other people. Um, Shatterstar was great to see Shatterstar back. Um, and do uh, uh, Goop. Uh, which is uh, really funny. He, they found him uh, street racing in uh, Hunts Point in the BX, the Bronx, which is pretty funny. Uh, so they go pretty much sneak into the Hellfire Club because that's where Celine is. She hasn't left. And uh, Cable's telling them, don't let her touch you. Don't let her do this. If you This is going to go wrong if you don't. And unfortunately, yeah, it's... It's kind of a free for all where Selena's like, you know, you trying to kill me, and she's, you know, going all crazy. And Cable's like, look, we come to talk. We're not trying to kill you. And uh, it ends with a certain reveal that was pretty interesting. I didn't mind it too much, but uh, yeah, Cable uh, 150. Um, not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, not bad at all. Uh, move on to. Champions number 13, uh, Mark Wade. Uh, this is still continuing the, the crossover between the, the Avengers and the Champions. This is Worlds Collide Part 2. And yeah, the worlds are colliding. It's getting crazy. Uh, you got Herc, Herc and Amadeus fighting a Minotaur. You got um, you got all the other members who are teaming up, You know, handling all these catastrophes around the world. And uh, a little something that's going on with Vision and Viz, his daughter. And at the end of the issue, two members of each team go missing somewhere else. Hmm. Not bad, Mr. Wade. We move on to Doctor Strange number 26. Uh, this is Barber and uh, Henrich con i believe first of all i like that cover <laughs> it's it's uh really funny uh really cool to see uh like strange is like a boxer he's like a... and uh in this basically strange his new pupil are investigating uh happenings deep down in the subway systems in new york and uh looking for artifacts and things like that um and they come close they do come in con into contact with an artifact and individuals that 
most people probably wouldn't think live deep down underneath in the tunnels of New York City, and I'm not talking about the Morlocks, but uh, yeah, it uh, pretty much comes to that, and uh, by the end of the issue, it's more like, whoa, because that next issue, we see a certain somebody with a certain artifact that the Sorcerer Supreme has, and that person is Loki. All right, next up we have, um, Invincible Iron Man number 593, uh, you just want to see, I got 12 covers. Um, some, some of these, uh, covers are pretty cool, so I get them, I don't, this is the classic cover from, um, uh, Invincible Iron Man, the, uh, 150, when you see Iron Man and, uh, Dr. Doom. Um, this was supposed to be playing up the fact that, you know, it, it played up the fact that, are we going to see, this is kind of false advertising, you can't probably see it, but the fact is that it shows Riri and Doom, both who are carrying the Iron Man legacy about to fight. First of all, I'll let you know right now, that does not happen. Uh, Tony goes, as you all know, Tony Stark's body has gone missing. And um, people in higher up in the company are don't care, and a lot of political backlash from everything that's going on, especially with Tony's birth mother, I believe, biological mother. Um, and that's pretty much it so far. We also get some more into Doom. You know, people, especially especially Ben. You know, Ben still. Don't trust Doom as far as he can throw him in terms of, you know, being good and, you know, being uh, this, this you know, legacy to Iron Man. He doesn't trust him. And uh, he's staying on Doom like white on rice. Even though S.H.I.E.L.D. is no more, he's still going to do it. Uh, somebody asked me that question before. How do I feel about S.H.I.E.L.D. being gone in the MCU? In the um, in the Marvel Universe, I uh, don't really like it. Um, honestly, you know, Shield should still be. I honestly, I still feel Shield still be should be around. I I feel that Sword should still be around, even though that's kind of down Miss Captain Marvel's job. Her and Alpha Flight. Um, and as for Armor, which was the which was the uh, agency that dealt with. Uh, anybody from different dimensions that crossed over they would handle that we don't see them anymore yeah anyway moving on Luke Cage number 160 uh, David Walker I told David Walker personally uh, at this year's comic-con thank you for what you're doing with Luke Cage um, first of all the cover yes so after Luke finished up his ordeals in New Orleans, after you know everything, he went to the funeral of Doctor uh, Bernstein, the guy who gave him his power, you know his abilities, uh, faked his death and everything like that. He's driving back home, driving back to New York, and he gets pulled over by a cop, and the cop tells him you're speeding. And he's like, I'm sorry, officer. Look, um, shows him his Avengers ID. And the cop says, oh, we don't get your kind around here. And Luke looks at him like, my kind. I, I thought that was perfect. Uh, he's like, my kind. And he's like, no, Avengers. And, you know, he's like, oh. And he's like, okay, I'll give you a warning. But little does he know that that cop, there was more to that cop that meets the eye. Luke pulls over into a diner. He's. He's getting a cup of coffee and things like that. One of the waitress comes up and says, "You're Luke Cage. I, I, I can I, I may need your help." And all of a sudden, police come in, and uh, shit starts hitting the fan from there. Uh, pretty much, Luke ends up in prison again, and it seems like the prison is run by a certain classic villain, the Ringmaster. Now, you may say to yourself, well, Luke probably can break out. It seems that Luke somehow 
Luke is vulnerable now. He got clocked in the head and, you know, he's knocked out. He was bleeding. What? Moving on. Um, for the for for the week of the October eighteenth, this was my pick of the week. Thor number seven hundred, the death of the mighty Thor part one. Um, this was great. This was a combination of great talents uh, coming together, different tales. Um, from different versions or different Thor characters. So we get tales from uh, Thor Odinson, or he just called himself Odinson. I, st I wish they stopped doing that. <laughs> uh, Jane Foster, um, old man Thor, King Thor with his granddaughters, or grand, yeah. Uh, we even get Th Throck, the, the, the frog of thunder, you know, the, the little frog that actually has the power of Thor that he's in this. Um, and pretty much, oh yeah, and War Thor, who is, um, is Valstag. Valstag, pretty much. So we get different stories that le kind of accommodate into the whole story. Uh, the first story, the first part, we see uh, Thor going to speak to uh, Carnilla. The Queen of the Norm. It's really good that they brought her back. And I was like, wow, we haven't seen her in a long time. And she's telling Thor Odinson that she may need her help and things like that. He Thor even sees a, an old vision of himself when he was still had the hammer. And she says, what do you see? And he's like, me, when I in my glory days and when I was happy and worthy. It's just like, it's like, oh my God, I can't take Thor like this. He's so miserable. He looks so miserable at times. It's, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to see Thor like this, guys. It does. It really does. Um, to see him really kind of like shut down and he's just really, just really all like, I'm I'm not worthy things like that. Then we get a uh, we get to see what Jane Foster doing and she's fighting. She has a fight with uh, uh, Jennifer Walters Hulk. You know her new Hulk form got her enraged and we get another classic Hulk Thor fight. Um, and we get to see a little bit more what the future may hold, where we see that Thor's granddaughters they're talking about. And Thor is talking about what happened to certain things. We see a character called Dark Galactus. And there's a fight between him and Ego, the living planet. And this fucker, this fucker, Dark, Dark uh, Galactus eats, literally eats Ego. I was just like, ugh. Like, uh, but all this brings up is it combinates into something is coming. Something tremendous power and it's terrible and Carnila knows it's coming and she even sees the possible future and we do get to see the possible future uh we see in one of the big panels uh thor with the hammer mjolnir what is golden he's got a golden arm he's got looks like he's backing all his glory but it, it, this was just so good um thank everybody on this uh who worked on this this was really good this was my pick of the week uh the mighty thor number uh 700 this was really good very good i enjoyed it all right moving on to uh spider gwen number 25 uh gwen enum uh the symbiote's on gwen and she's trying going kind of a muck Pretty much, you know, just, just getting crazy. It really is. Uh, she looks really weird, too, with the symbiote on. It's it's weird to say, but, yeah, that's what's going on with this. What more can I say? 
Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man, number five. All right. Uh, Peter was dealing with um, the vulture in this, but also trying to stay save Owatu, you know, the little boy who he used to work with in his Horizon days, things like that. Um, we also get some more into J. Jonah Jameson, J.J., and tells Peter he needs to have an interview with Spider-Man, all this everything like that um and that's pretty much the gist of it the next issue which i've read um is definitely uh kind of a i don't know if it's a head turner but yeah not bad but the cover is cool i love that cover and peter does have kind of a moment like that all right we move on to x-men gold number 14 uh, this is Mojo Worldwide, number three, part three. And um, mainly the gist is the X-Men are still dealing with Mojo. And every and they keep met, doing everything in terms of Mojo is just using everything he can to... You've seen all the history of the X-Men. Um, they're even changing costumes at one point. There's even one point uh, the team is in their 90s look. And even, I think it was Beast... No, not Beast... Uh, uh, I think it was Kitty that said this is so 90s look. But, but like, some of the X-Men's 90s costume I love. I mean, even Rachel is wearing her mother's 90s look. It was really cool. I thought it was cool. Um, this does happen where they do fight Magneto. Um, but it's not the Magneto now. And Cyclops drops, young Cyclops drops a bomb on the rest of the other, you know, everybody, he tells him that the, you know, Team Blue, the younger X-Men have been working with Magneto, so, uh, yeah, it's pretty much a just like that, pretty much, but it's still fun, it's just really good to see Mojo, That that's pretty much, alright, so that's all the Marvel, let's move on to the indie books, and the first one, we're going to do this in a double dose, because one of them is kind of a back issue, but uh, we're going to Action Labs, and of course, uh, Mr. Uh, DeSanti, of course I'm going to support this. I told him I would always support his creation. Um, uh, we're, we're going back to Action Verse number one, and Action Verse number two featuring Stray. Um, this is the Rockwaller years. Basically, what this is, the character Stray, you see right here, uh, uh, you get a better look at him right there. He, we're seeing him when he was still called, uh, I think he was called Rockwaller. Yeah, when he was called Rockwaller. Um, and we're seeing his younger years and things like that, pretty much. And what led up to him becoming what he is now. And it's been really fun. We're getting to see other young heroes that he worked with. Kind of like a Teen titan this vibe to it. But it's really fun. Um, there, He's at one point in the story... The flashback we're seeing him at an academy that has other super powered uh individuals they're called amps they're called amps in this world a m a m p uh advanced uh meta i forgot what it's called uh what that stands for but uh pretty much that's the gist of it so far it's been really good. It's been really fun. I've really been enjoying it. Uh, Stray, one and two, uh, the Rockwaller years, year one, part one and part two. Really good stuff. Okay, next up, we move on to uh, Action Lab, Dark uh, Danger Zone. This is more the mature side of Action Lab. And we're on to uh, Dollface. Uh, number 10, which I've been really enjoying. <laughs> She's a, a witch hunter trapped in like a a doll body. It's really funny. Uh, and things are not looking too well for her because one of her creators is trapped and in his like ghostly form. And he's being held hostage. And it's up to Dollface to pretty much help and find him before he is caught by the opposition which are which is another witch uh but it's really fun uh this is the issue number 10 and mendoza's 
uh, writing is just really, really fun. Like I said, think of weird science, but instead of a um, magical, sexy genie, it's more of a witch hunter from the past in the body of a doll. But it's just fun. All right, move on to IDW, and we're on to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universe number 15, uh, Karai's Path. Yeah, that's pretty much what this is based off. This is all uh, dealing with Karai and things like that, um, and a couple other mutants that were in here. We even get some yokai in here, yeah, like real yokai, demons. You know, it was really interesting. Uh, but it's all centered around Karai, and that's pretty much it. Just not bad, not bad. Uh, Burnham does a good job, but um, not bad, not bad at all. Move on to uh, Valiant, and I believe this is the last issue of this uh, Faith and the Future Force. Uh, Jody Hauser does a good job with this. This was fun. Um, so to stop the world from ending, Faith and uh, the rest of the, her team has to think out the box, and they use this, uh, somebody she knows she's going to come into contact with to save the world. He's an actor, but he's a dick. He's, uh, he's, he doesn't like heroes, and, but they use him to save the world from this robot invasion, and it works, too. Uh... But the way the the execution of it was really good. I enjoyed how Mr. Hauser uh, did it. Uh, but it, it was fun. This was fun indeed. Uh, always enjoyed Faith. All right. DC, here we go. We'll move on to Aquaman number 29. Mira and Tempest Breakthrough. Uh, or Aquaman's Fate is Sealed. So... Uh, Arthur is still trapped with Dolphin. First of all, it's, it's great to see Dolphin back. You know, they basically say, you know, she and, you know, Garth knew each other. They were friends, and she he cared about her. And pre, they were married and everything. And, uh, you know, the, the other Atlantean king, I'm forgetting his name right now, um, you know, they call Ar Arthur the false king. And they're trying to find him. And uh, there are some people that, you know, knew that Arthur, that Arthur is alive. They think he's dead. But his his guard, the leader of his, his guard, put an end to that. Uh, my biggest thing was just seeing Dolphin. You know, you know, it was really cool to see her. And it was good to see Ar Garth in an Aquaman book. We haven't seen, you know, we've always seen Garth in, you know, the Titans book. But it was really good to see him. And uh, Mira, always good to see Mira. She's got a, she's got a mini-series coming out. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, Batman number 33, Rules of Engagement Part 1. Um, main gist of this is Catwoman and Batman going to, I'm forgetting the country's name. It's supposed to be like a Middle Eastern country. Uh, why? To see the daughter of the demon. Uh, Alfred tells the rest of the boys, all the boys, Thomas, uh, Thomas, uh, Dick, Jay, Jason, everybody that Bruce proposed to Selena and she's accepted. And they're kind of like, wait, what? Uh, and that's mainly just a bit, but they're going to see Talia. And um, Damien even says, Damien even knows why they're, he's going. And the ending is really interesting. You see Talia, look like she had a motherfucking orgy. It was like naked people all in the bed behind her. And I'm just like, she had an orgy or something? Like, she, and Talia get down like that? You know, and, and she just like, and somebody tells her Batman has entered, and he's like, okay, someone fetch me my swords. So I'm guessing Bruce needs to tell Ty, hey, look, I'm marrying Selena. Don't fuck, get out of my, stay out of my life or whatever. I don't know. It's just really weird. Uh, Batwoman, number eight, a duel in the desert. Um, 
this don't really happen. Um, Scarecrow plays off of Bat Batwoman's fears, and pretty much that's the gist of it. Um, and it's going to get real serious real quick, especially with that ending. I was like, okay, that ending reminded me of something out of Arkham. Green Arrow, number 33, uh, Trial of Two Cities, part one, uh, with Star City against him. Oliver Queen murder trial begins. Percy still continues to do a good job with this. Um, Ollie's back in Seattle. People st still want his head for a, a death he didn't commit, a crime he didn't commit. Um... The people that were running that organization, I'm forgetting the name of it, have contacted Shadow to take out somebody. And, oh yeah, Moira McQueen, Moira Queen is alive. Okay. Yeah. Green Lanterns, number 33, work release. Uh, buried alive. Yeah, this is pretty much just um, the team has to save these individuals who are about to be buried alive. You know, uh, they get a John gives them a stress call about stopping a, a super a supernova, and then it gets far worse than that. And uh, yeah, uh, do they overcome? Even though this book has been out for a while, I'm not going to spoil it for you. Hmm. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. All right. This came close to being my pick of the week. If Thor didn't come out, I didn't get this. I, I, Thor, if I didn't get Thor, this would have been my pick of the week. Uh, Future Quest presents Space Ghost number three. Uh, Jeff Parker does a great job of this. And Oliventi's art, artwork for it was perfect. Uh, so we got Metallus. Look at that Metallus right there. That's dope. Classic Space Ghost villain. Uh, trying to really be... Trying really hard. He was going to destroy the ghost planet and everything. Um, and it's up to Space Ghost to find him and help. You know, stop this madman from destroying his... His home, you know, things like that. Uh, Jan and Jace blip... Yes, and this, all this, and including the Herculoids and Xandor and Tara, it just felt like classic, the classic cartoons where they would guest star in their 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 cartoons. It was really fun. This was just really fun, and um, I can't say any more of how fun this was. This would have made my pick of the week. It really would have. All right, um, Justice League number. 31 uh, legacy uh, the future ends here um this got I'm kind of glad this storylines over where we're seeing the I guess the future kids of the just league Diana has a son uh, cyborg has a son I don't know how but yeah he has a son uh, Aquaman has a daughter and, you know it's kind of weird, and this person right here is actually Hippolyta, but other than that, you know, it's just, it is what it is. I don't know, maybe, I think maybe Hitch needs to stop doing both story, doing writing and the artwork. It just, you know, pick one at a time. This is just a little confusing at times, you know. If you jumped on this, you would really be like, okay, what the hell's going on? But... Yeah, we don't know. It was interesting, though. But kind of, this was an iffy issue for me. Um, Next up is uh, Nightwing number 31, Raptor's Revenge. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Raptor, the guy he was working with in the beginning of when this series first started, is starting to garner his revenge, you know, get his revenge. Uh, Huntress guess makes a cameo in this, and she knees Dick in the balls, which is really stupid. And I was just like, "What the fuck?" I, you know, 
the hell was that for? And um, this does not happen. So just to let you know. Um, but other than that, it was uh, this was okay. Not bad. Could have been better, but I'm looking forward to what's going to happen next. And that's pretty much what I, I'm looking forward to more. All right. Move on to Imperious Lex, part one of Superman number 33. And Super Lex Luthor gets kidnapped. Peter Tomasi does a good job with the writing. Uh, Lex Luthor gets kidnapped from, from Earth by people from Apocalypse. And uh, he sends a distress call out to Superman uh, that only Kryptonians can hear. So John and uh, Clark can hear it. But, you know, it's, he's thinking, oh, Lex is just playing with me, you know, because he does this all the time. You know, it's family night. They're going out to a movie and things like that. Unfortunately, Pop, they all end up him, John, and Lois end up on Apocalypse. What the hell? Um, let's move on to uh, The World Stops. Uh, no, this is issue 16 of Titans. Um, is Wally West dead? Uh, the Well, old Wally West. I don't think so. But they're still dealing with Simon. And uh, the team is uh, having a hard time with Simon, of course. And his his members of his Titans, I guess you could say. Um, and uh, we get an ending to... A certain somebody returning or someone who looks like Donna her name is Troy in and um, this kind of goes back to the whole Titans forever stuff the Titans Titans hunt story and everything like that with mr. Twister and everything like that uh, but we do yeah Wally West this Wally West does is in this issue as well but I don't you know Wally ain't dead and last but not least, y'all, uh, we end it. We're gonna end this with uh, Wonder Woman, Conan, um, Gail Simone. Uh, this was fun. So we see in the past, Conan he knew a woman by the name of uh, what was her name, Yana, and Yana looks rem and older now. Conan thinks the girl he knew is Diana. Diana has lost her memory somehow. She doesn't remember who she is. Um, and they're in they're in like this kind of like battle and things like that. Uh, does this happen where they're in shark infested waters? Yes, it does. Uh, but it's this is actually the ending of it, and uh, I thought it was uh, really fun. It was really interesting. It's, it's really interesting because you don't you don't know how they're gonna play this off. Um, you know how they're gonna play these two being together. But it so far it's working. It's really working. It's fun. I love both of these characters. Thank you, Miss Simone, as always. Uh, Gail, I love you as always. Uh, you do just a great job with this. And we're only two episodes, episode two issues in. Uh, this is a uh, with now we have four more issues to go, but. This does happen. I'll let you know that. Well, there you guys have it. Uh, those are the books I got. And those are my thoughts for the books I picked up for the week of October 18th. Uh, hit you guys with another episode for the books that came up for the last week of October. And then, of course, I'm getting into the next. Um, and so on and so on. But other than that, guys, this is my Vernon Kid. To all my fellow comic geeks out there, as always, you guys take it easy. Stay tuned. Keep it real, as always. Thank you for hitting that play button. I hope I entertained you as much as I can. Y'all take care.